perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Oh yeah, they're they're really additional to propaganda, especially uh, recently. I mean, this this whole if you're believing in conspiracy theorists, you're a terrorist thing came out a few years back, probably shortly after 9/11, as far as I remember. But it's it's just coming out into the public now as uh, common knowledge, which is great. You know, it's wonderful. You see it on uh, everywhere posted on Facebook. So that's good that people are finding out about this, and they're not scared. It's not shutting us up as they were expecting it to be. It's just making people more angry, which is awesome. Because we really do need to get angry. How do they not fucking understand that, okay, when the fucking Obama comes out and says, there will be those warning of tyranny and all that bullshit, that's a direct address to that. Okay, if there was nothing going on, he wouldn't address it at all. Right. He's the perfect liar. I think he's a fucking brainwashed puppy. He's a perfect liar. There's a uh, documentary on YouTube called... Uh, fuck, signs of body language or something like that, analyze all these political people. Oh, yeah. I want to watch that. He shows no signs of lying, so it means he has to believe his own bullshit. And right. he knows, I mean, you, you, everybody knows it ain't true. Oh, it's just true. Uh, I, I have some experience with uh, detecting lying through body language. As my favorite show at one point used to be Lie to Me, and I watched every episode a few times, and then, uh, and then I looked into it farther, into the science, and, and the guy who actually came up with the show and, uh, and I looked into what he had to say personally about and uh, and you're right he, there's no detectable lying on Obama it's just his words are so incredibly false that it's just he's telling lies he obviously believes his own lies he's a bit of a sociopath for sure and that's what they say people who don't give uh, signs of lying who, who do it that professionally are 100% uh, certified sociopath they didn't go to a a therapist or a court to get that judgment against them but it's just the way it is they got their way by it and, and a lot of politicians are that way and it's real creepy we end up uh, promoting our sociopaths into positions of power and uh, and how are we going to get um, how are we going to do anything about it it's not like we're going to get them to incriminate themselves so it's up to us to, to get the word out there and, uh, well, but, yeah, and they do it all through plausible deniability you can't uh they get it where it's a group of people that could be held accountable, and honestly, they even whoever it is, Brian, you know, but you can't just go around charging everybody with everything. They they do everything with plausible deniability. I mean, they realize what they're fucking doing. I mean, if, if anybody's on to them, they detect that they're the fucking NSA. Oh, somebody saying that on a cell phone, cut that short, change the story. When you're out on the street and you're fucking causing shit violence, they know what to do with you. If you're not violent, they don't know what the fuck to do. Just like with Martin Luther King, remain peaceful. That's what he knew what the fuck he was doing. Right. You know what I mean? Because if you get violent, oh, they have fucking plenty to do with you. No problem there. Well, for sure. I mean, I understand what you're saying there, and that's most certainly a possibility. I agree. And, and it's, we can't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it I'm we have to keep it nonviolent. That's for sure. We have no choice, especially in this day and age with the technology. With all of our circumstances, I don't want to just say that plain out there because if you and your family's lives in danger, you, you better do what you think's the best. But as the most part, going to protest, etc., etc., yes, you remain nonviolent. That's stupid. But as far as somebody coming to your house and telling you you got to go, etc., etc., you know, fucking that is your right to defend your, your property and family. Oh, yeah. now, I ain't going to no motherfucking FEMA camp. I'll burn down my house with me in it. For sure. <laughs> well, for sure. At that point, just like Larkin Rose and Chris Cantwell say, you know, you gotta, you gotta shoot back. Basically, that's that's when it's your right to kill a cop or to kill a federal agent. For uh, sure. And what's fucked up is they want to act like, oh, they said this and that. Okay, well, what was the extenuating circumstances around them saying this or that? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you shouldn't ever say that about, you know, well, uh, all laws should be just and shit. Also, and. uh we ain't, we ain't got very good logic in this country. Well, absolutely not. Our, our country is founded on this sort of uh, what we're talking about here. So Trauma-based mind control, that summed up. We're very much in the right to talk about it and to contemplate worst-case scenario. We have to keep all options on the table, else we're making ourselves vulnerable and we're pretty much slaves if we don't even consider it. The poverty of our century is unlike that of any other. 
It is not, as poverty was before, the result of natural scarcity, but of a set of priorities imposed upon the rest of the world by the rich. Consequently, the modern poor are not pitied, but are written off as trash. The 20th century consumer economy has produced the first culture for which a beggar is a reminder of nothing. And that quote comes from John Berger. One should never doubt the universe's ability to bring about that which is most necessary for the survival of the species, regardless of how catastrophic things may first appear. And so, as disastrous as many of these events may seem to be, one should never fail to recognise the opportunities that such events provide us with. You see, it just depends on how you look at things, folks. I see all of the bad stuff that's going on in the world. I see all of the bad things the governments are doing, all of the really weird environmental stuff that's going on. And while it's all quite concerning and it's quite disturbing in many ways, when I look at it holistically, I think that it's all perfect. Because one of our purposes here is to learn about cause and effect. And what we are seeing manifesting in the world today is the effect of our actions. It's the effect of our collective failure to take responsibility for ourselves. You see, all of the things that are going on in the world, all of the bad things that we refer to, that I refer to on many of these shows, that many alternative news personalities bring to you, all of these things that are happening are the direct result of us allowing them to happen. They're a direct result of the people of the world failing to take responsibility for what's going on in the world. Our collective failure to do anything about the problem because as so many hundreds of people have indicated to us in the past, all it actually takes for evil to be perpetuated is for good people to look on and to do nothing. All it takes is for the citizens of the earth to see any particular problem and decide that it doesn't concern them and to turn a blind eye. That's all it takes, folks, and that's all it's taken to turn the world into what we now see unfolding so clearly before us. You see, it's all about balance, folks. It's all about balance. We can't simply lay all the blame on the powers that be for all the problems that we face because the powers that be would never have got away with doing what they've done were it not for our acquiescence to their actions. And so we can't simply complain about the situation we're facing in the world and expect someone else to fix it. We have to fix it ourselves. And the way we fix it is by uniting as one species and standing up and not complying with the system. The most powerful tools we have at our disposal are truly civil disobedience and lawful rebellion. And these two options can really only be successful if people stand up en masse. We really do need the strength of numbers to make it work at all. And the best way to gain this strength of numbers, folks, and the best way to wake people up and to get people to stand up is to stand up yourself. People need to follow their heart, and the best way to convince people to follow their heart and to influence them into following their heart is to follow your own. We really must lead by example. I regard myself as a soldier, though a soldier of peace. Moi, je me considère comme un soldat, quand même un soldat de la paix. I know the value of discipline and truth. Je sais très bien la valeur de la discipline et de la vérité. I must ask you to believe me when I say that I have never made a statement of this description that the masses of India, if it became necessary, would resort to violence. En attendant, laissez-moi vous dire que je n'ai jamais dit que les masses de l'Inde, si c'était nécessaire, recourraient à la violence. I regard myself as incapable in my lucid moments of having, uh, of making a statement of this character. It is complete independence that we want.